life, overdraft and ulcer to support. Please give generously. Sandra, I will not have all this aggro. Oh, shut up! It is a thoughtful present, Mrs. Hutchinson. And it hides the rust round the bottom of the cage. <laughs> yes, well, I thought it would be something you could all enjoy. And on my rare visits here, it'll save me fishing canary seed out of my tea. <laughs> <laughs> Another year gone, boy. Would you believe that now? A whole year since you and I got together and you were mourning the passing of your youth and the general depreciation of your body. It, it was with that in mind that I got you the massager. Oh, there's a special soap inside, herbal, and a lovely smelling lotion that you apply after the massage. Oh. Yes, it's better in the bath, of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> Who does it? Who does what? <laughs> this. <laughs> <laughs> or wherever one may choose to wander. Oh, the massage. Yes. You do it yourself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it brightens your skin and alarms your muscles. I'm told that it is an exhilarating experience. And besides, it gets rid of the fat. <laughs> Can't you do something about all that twitching and moaning? What with him and those flashing lights? It's like watching a traffic accident. <laughs> It's a good job he's an athletic sleeper. The twitching and moaning is the only exercise he gets. <laughs> Do they all go like that? Huh? It's a sad fact and it brings a shake of the head. You mean that after we've laid ourselves down on the sacrificial marriage slab and given our everything, our minds, our bodies, our girlhood, our romantic aspirations, we end up with that? <laughs> Well, that is how the good and educated Lord made it, yes. You know, Mrs. Boswell, wandering into your somewhat curious, somewhat more basic, if not common world, has taught me a great deal. It has taught me that we are, after all, not quite so different. No, we all act out the same tragedies, Mrs. Hodgson, in the play of life. Yes. Except, of course, that my play is set in a rose garden, whereas yours is on a bomb site. <laughs> However, you wear silk, I wear cotton. I eat caviar, you eat scouse. I say butty, you say sandwich. My husband drives an S registration, yours rides a bike. <laughs> but they both end up... clapped out. <laughs> Mine... Sleeps alone. Is that so? Upstairs. God bless us and save us. Without me. Holy Mother. By himself. Saint Theresa, Holy Father, and all the saints. <laughs> Will you stop bringing the Holy Family into it? What do they know about it? They never got married, did they? I'm sorry. Forgive me. It's just that I've left him at home with the Christmas tree. Well, bits of it. Did he have an outburst then? The top half, with the fairy on it, is hanging from the light fitting. <laughs> oh, no, it's not going to be a very happy Christmas. Ooh, I wish he'd disappear off the face of the earth. <laughs> oh, no, no, not dead or anything like that. Alive and well, but gone. <laughs> See, Carol. Oh, thanks. Oh, I'll do it, Emmy. It tends to dribble, and then we get a stain on the polished table. <laughs> Help yourself to sugar. Thanks. Oh, use the tongs, Carol. They were a wedding present. <laughs> Drop on the polished table, Carol. <laughs> so, how's everything at home? It's funny being back. The rooms are so small. We all sit round at night with a stool in front of us, and there's such a build up of feet you can't see the telly. <laughs> It'll be the first Christmas for three years we haven't all been together. Yeah. 
I was marriage anyway. Oh, Carol, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, here I am in my beautiful home, surrounded by beautiful things. <laughs> Carol, you please stop moving your feet around. Only your shoes and scrape the leg of the polished table. <laughs> now I'm in my own boss. I have no one to tell me what time to get up. No one to tell me what time to have lunch. No one to complain about my music. No one to talk to. No one to laugh with. No one to confide in. You've got Jenica at night, haven't you? Yeah, but there's the ten hours in between, isn't there? Do you know, Carol, it's got that way now that sometimes I find myself talking for hours to that lamp standard over there. I thought you were going to work at the clinic anyway. I am going to march forward, Carol, you said, and then I'm going to write me book on open heart surgery. The only book I'd write be about open heart housework. No, Carol, it doesn't work. Being together all day, it just doesn't work. Why aren't you pregnant yet, anyway? <laughs> I don't know, do I? That's Mother Nature's department, isn't it? Well, she does need cooperation, you know. I mean, if I give you a pint of milk and a packet of custard powder, the custard wouldn't just make itself, would it? <laughs> so what would you have to do? Well, you put the two together. <laughs> Derek and I have a very full, very beautiful physical existence, Carol. Just checking, that's all. <laughs> Nothing's perfect, is it? Nope. So I must just get out of my mind the feeling that this first Christmas together is going to be fraught, if not disastrous. It won't be disastrous. You're imagining it. I'm not, Carol. I'm absolutely not. <sighs> what is it? A Christmas cake. It's knackered. <laughs> Derek's very overworked, Carol, and the clinic's not paying its way. We quarrelled. So we jumped on it. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I've done my day. I'm going back to sheds. Yeah. Christmas. They can keep it. I wish I could shut my eyes, open them again and find it's all over. Like having an operation. People become unbalanced at Christmas. The women suffer from commotions of the purse, and the men suffer from grave disorders of the wallet. They're the real problem, the women. They turn Christmas into a nightmare, a diabolical nightmare. If I was given ten seconds to think of a handful of men who'd like to get away from it all, I'd have no trouble. Mr. Hutchinson's better start, God help him. He has to work flat out to keep airing hats. <laughs> Sanders fella, newly married, newly disillusioned, our Lucian and our granddad. One hasn't got the energy and the other can't stay awake long enough to pull a bloody cracker. <laughs> That's four already, and me's five. I'll bet if I were to ring them up and say, how'd you like to close your eyes, open them again and find it's gone, they'd jump at it. they diabolical jump at it. Hello, Mr. Hutchinson. It's Boswell here, Carol's dad. Listen, I've had what you might describe as a spontaneous thought.
you get away from it all? Everybody. <laughs> On your marks, get set, go. <laughs> oh, Matty, you shook them all off. No, it's all right. I'm perfectly calm. I'm not going to waste my energy in tears. I'm saving that for when they get back. <laughs> he never could be trusted with that bus. I was always explaining to him that it belongs to the corporation. It doesn't matter anyway. They're having a good time. It's up to us to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> And was that supposed to cure everything? It was just a merry little gesture, you know. A sort of mating call to your hat. <laughs> I don't know why you're all upset. It'll do your marriage as good. My marriage is perfect already. Yes. Mine was managing to hobble along with the help of crutches. <laughs> Mine is completely bedridden. <laughs> if we're going to spend Christmas Day discussing your marriages, let's begin at the beginning and ask the crucial question. Do I love him? Deeply. I don't know what the word love means anymore. <laughs> it means, am I prepared to give myself to him utterly? And no, I'm not. <laughs> and the next question, does he love me? Deeply. He doesn't know what the word love means either. <laughs> well, in their case, it means, am I prepared to take her completely for granted and smother her with demands? And yes, he is. <laughs> They all think daft anyway. To take a man and a woman and try to make them live in the same house together. It's like putting an elephant and a caterpillar in the same cage. Excuse me, I don't follow. What have an elephant and a caterpillar got in common? Nothing. <laughs> and you should be laying them. <laughs> now what? I love him and I miss him and I need him. Would you mind crying into that, please? He'd take the polish off the polished table. <laughs> I've just remembered why he's gone. All the things I've done wrong. I complained all the time. Don't do this, do this, do that. Where have you been? Why are you late? All he ever did was work hard for me. I drove him away. Come to think of it, when mine leaves the house in the morning, I'm in the habit of putting me head through the door and calling. Well, I'd better not discuss what I call. <laughs> and anyway, I don't call it, I shriek it. <laughs> and it's rude. <laughs> there was a slug in his salad once. <laughs> And I just sat there and let him eat it. <laughs> he accused me of falling out of love with his socks. <laughs> Has anybody anything to add to that? <laughs> All he said when he left was, I've got to have a day off from the world. Oh, mine wobbled down the road on his bike like a man with a burden on his back. <laughs> mine just crept out of the house and ran and got on the bus. <laughs> he did utter something. I'll have to check on that when they get back. <laughs> All I've got left to remind me of Derek is his Land Rover and his surgical wellies. <laughs> but where could they go on Christmas Day? They won't go anywhere in particular. You know me dad, he's happy just driving his bus. Soon as they open them sheds in the morning, he's off like a bloody albatross. <laughs> there is one thing. There's a pub in Wales. The Punch Bowl. Oh, ma'am, you're not bringing that up. That was years ago. That's where he used to go to meet that blonde cow. It was their... <laughs> their illegitimate rendezvous. <laughs> he went one 
Christmas Day, that's all, and that was to call it all off. But perhaps he's going to call it all on again. <laughs> Mr. Hutchinson and Derek and our Lucian and wait for it, me granddad. Well, you never knew. 1977's been a funny year. <laughs> perhaps they're all at it. I will not have that. Derek is a very moral man. The only reason he isn't here now is pressures of life. He'd much rather be here with me than on that bus, but that bus was nice to him and I wasn't. That'll be him. Tell him, Carol. Tell him I do not want to talk to him. We are unanimous in our silence. Oh, it is an awesome thing when we resort to silence. <laughs> Listen, you, I've got a message from the matrimonial trio here. They all thought they'd marry fellas that were strong, but you three were about as strong as a row of chalk ices in a hot oven. Oh, and I've been making your wives on Christmas Day. Anyway, the message is everything's fine here, we're not bothered, and you can just. <laughs> <laughs> What's the wrong number? <laughs> I don't have the same problem as you. I love my wife. It's just that I don't want to spend the whole of Christmas explaining why I jumped on the Christmas cake. I like Wales. Doesn't matter what time of the year it is, it's always Welsh in Wales. Ethel was like that once. The same going in and coming out and bouncing all about. Sandra's like that now, actually. I like this pub and all. Whenever I feel sad or happy or tense or pensive, I drive out here. A lot of my passengers got to like this pub. <laughs> In those days, she wasn't experienced and wise. She was like a young mare, and I, I was a stallion. Yeah. Sandra and I know the feeling. I was saying, once I was a young stallion, the world was a green field, and I reared and bucked in it. I don't mourn the past myself. The past doesn't bother me. It's what I'm capable of now that counts, and it's not a lot, so I've nothing to worry about. <laughs> I like flat-chested girls with long, pale hair and teeth that stick out. Oh, they're not easy to come by. You might have to settle for one of your rabbits. Now, when I see Ethel's set face and that great Vesuvius bosom rearing with female wrath, I, I suffer from... Impotence of the personality. I get it when Eileen clenches her eyes and puckers her face. Just before she bears down on me with the teapot or some similar kitchen device. We all end up puckered and clenched with life's catastrophes huddled beneath our eyes. Oh God, listen to him. He's about as cheerful as a black armband. <laughs> we came here to be joyful. We came here to get away from Christmas and women. I suppose I will get married one day. There was this girl once, on a bus. I looked at her and I thought to myself, I'd like to marry you, I thought. It was a very short relationship. She got off at the next stop. Did you see that? D did you see it? Very dangerous, patting bottoms. Very hazardous. When you're young, they giggle at you. When you're 30, they bloody report you. Unpredictable creatures, women. After she got off the bus, the girl, I thought to myself, being alive is like being a tightrope walker, and being married is like having somebody twanging the rope. That's a coward's way out there. No man should go to his grave without having his rope twanged. I part of his agony. A man has to have agony, then he can appreciate his ecstasy. This is ecstasy, sitting here, in a punch bowl, all men together, with the agony at home. Hang about, here's your culture now. This is your genuine mixture of Nelly Dean and a TDM. <laughs> I dedicate this song to my dear, long-lost, very deceased missus. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll walk beside you to the world today. I like this song. You can talk to it without feeling guilty. Let's go away. I'll look into the Excuse me, love. Could you 
tell us where the punch bowl is? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, indeed, yes. Uh, you go down there, up there, over there, across there, and you're there. Did you get that side, or shall we have it again in slow motion? I'll deal with this foreign gentleman. <laughs> Excuse me. We're looking for our husbands. They're in a green bus, and they've run away to the punch bowl. <laughs> On the surface, it would seem to be an innocent outing, but it has definite undertones of infidelity, if you see what I mean. So could you help us, please? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, indeed, yes. Uh, I know exactly what you mean. Yes, uh, you go right down there, and you can't miss it. Straight on. Thank you so much. A Merry Christmas and a Happy Yakidon. <laughs> to anything. It's a lovely sight, though, isn't it? I mean to say, at least they aren't in our direction. That's true. Oh, my boss doesn't receive any injuries. <laughs> I think we should go back to the pub. He's depressing me. Right. Oi, would you like to cease your merry little tune and follow us? Oh, I should have spent Christmas with me rabbits. <laughs> There'll be no waiting. You either keep up with us or we'll bury you where you fall. <laughs> and I won't have to face Eileen. It's all us lads together. No problems, no women, no nagging. To the pub! <laughs> Tomorrow's Christmas classic is spent in a good company of the Boswell's Bread is at five o'clock. And there's more festive comedy next today on BBC Two with Sykes. You're <laughs> 